Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you from sunny Chandler, Arizona. My name is Janine Noble with Sound Sports Imaging. My partner, Malka, is off still vacationing with her family and having a great time, and she will return next week. Um, we're in my home, in my living room today, because thanks to the traffic on the freeway here where they're doing a lot of construction, my windshield just is getting replaced. It's a hazard of Arizona and probably a lot of states too. Today we're going to talk about guided injections, which is a topic that I absolutely love. I think some of the most fun you can have with ultrasound is doing injections. And this can be used in all kinds of practices, uh, in a PT practice where you do dry needling, PAs, physicians, uh, anytime. And if you just want to play with it, it's kind of fun to, to see because it gives you some good eye-hand coordination. So I'm going to share my screen here with you. And we will start this. Sorry. All right, ultrasound guided injections. Uh, ultrasound scanning requires the knowledge of some basic physics principles. Now we've gone over this before, but we'll do just a, a short review. Different frequency of sounds are used for different types of imaging. A lower frequency down into the five, six range gives deeper penetration, but less resolution. So that would be down into say for an abdomen or a baby, and you're gonna get less, you will see better, res you'll see better in those areas but not so much in the superficial tissues. Then a higher frequency, a 10 through a, even a 17 or 18, will help you look better at the, at the more superficial structures. So shoulder, finger, that kind of thing. The higher the frequency, the more superficial you'll be able to look um, well. There are uh, several types of transducers. Most of the ones for injections that we use for musculoskeletal are gonna be the linear array transducers. And those are a mid to high megahertz, like we said, eight to 10 up to about a 15 or 16. There are two scan planes that we use in, scan, in uh, scanning for MSK. We use a long axis and a short axis, which is a cross section. And they're in reference to the structures being scanned or visualized, not the skin surface. So if you're trapeze, if your muscle goes like this, this will be your scan plane. If your muscle goes, is in this direction, say the trapezius, you'll scan in this direction for long and this direction for short, not up and down. You wanna go in the direction of the fibers. And then look for the notch on the transducer. We've talked about this. The notch corresponds to the left-hand side of the screen. And for our purposes today, the left will be proximal and medial on the screen. This helps keep you oriented, and it's especially important when you're doing injections because you'll need to know which way you might need to move to get into your uh, uh, objective area. Son sonography language, hyperechoic is exaggerated or extremely bright, which will be bone. Hypoechoic are low level echoes. Uh, less than the surrounding tissue. Anechoic means no echoes. That would be black, and that's gonna be fluid or blood generally. And then isoechoic is two structures with the same echogenicity. Um, and that would be a lipoma. Those are hard to see sometimes because they blend in with the surrounding tissues, but that's what isoechoic is. And this all is in relationship to everything else in the image. It's not just random kind of stuff. If you're looking at bone as hyperechoic, it is hyperechoic to the tendon that's next to it. So the tendon is hypoechoic to the, the bone, which is hyperechoic. So in here, we have that kind of thing. We've got several things here. We have anechoic, which is black, hypoechoic, and this is black um, anechoic in relation to everything else around here. Hypoechoic is less bright than what's inside here. I think this is a this is a kidney. So this is brighter white. So this would be hyperechoic. 
Um, one of the comments I've had forever on this uh, with physicians or whoever is, I've been giving injections forever. Why would I need ultrasound guidance? Well, it's been shown in a number of studies that using ultrasound guidance will give you a lot more pinpoint precision. And in these days when a lot of PRP or the regenerative medicine products are being used, you want to hit directly where you need to be. It also gives a patient peace of mind and a physical comfort. If you're going where you need to be, you're not hitting all the structures around it. One of the problems is that you go into, you know, the way you're taught is to go, stay in the carpal tunnel, down the bone, back off, and you're good. This will avoid hitting the bone because you get the patients jumping around when you do that. The other is if you're going to be doing these products, uh, especially the regen, you, you want to know you're in a place you need to be. And the other with that is if you are absolutely sure by using ultrasound guidance that you have gotten into the correct area, then if the patient comes back and didn't get the relief that you expected from this or were hoping from this, you might look at another underlying function or process besides just that because you know for sure you got where you need to. And for the patient's peace of mind, they want to know that you were in the correct area. It's also cutting edge technology. This is new. Not everybody is doing this, but the patients are getting more savvy too. There, I've had a number that call an office I'll be at and, and ask. It's like, do you do ultrasound guided injections? And you know, fortunately, more and more people are doing that because it is such a, a great way to inject. And then there is also reimbursement from this. So different areas that you can inject, and you may ask, well, what areas can I inject? And it's pretty much everything with MSK, anything superficial. The biceps tendon, rotator cuff tendons, the bursa, the anterior and posterior joints, and the AC joint. And especially in the subacromial bursa, <coughs> the previous way of doing this is coming posterior and just going up under the acromion. But you'll find out as you research a little that the bursa is actually a very small, small area. It's a potential space. It's a little balloon, a deflated balloon that only inflates if it has fluid in it. So it's not a whole huge thing. It's an itty bitty thing. So to accurately get into that, you need ultrasound guidance. In the knee, you can get into the joint space, which mind you, is easy enough to do. When I feel it's most useful in the need for this is if you have a fluffier patient or if you have a lot of arthritis and you're trying to avoid, pardon me, a lot of these arthritic changes. <clears throat> you can get into the meniscus, you can get into the medial and lateral collateral ligaments, the distal IT band, the distal hamstrings, and you can aspirate fluid with this. And ultrasound is an excellent way to aspirate fluid. Um, we've had video before of showing a needle going into uh, a patellofemoral joint, and it was a chronic fluid pocket, and it looks like a finger pushing on a balloon uh, without going in. And I know the different providers I've heard, and you may have had this yourself, where you just are not able to get that. Looking at it with ultrasound, you can see where it's just pushing that in like your finger would, but with ultrasound, you can get to an area where you can tap, get into it and the fluid will come out. And it's also shown that you can get, you know, 10 to 20% more fluid because you know the areas to go to and you can avoid synovitis in the knee or any of that junky stuff that gets in there. In the elbow, wrist and hand, you've got your elbow joints, uh, carpal tunnel, first CMC for decor veins, trigger fingers and into the finger joints. And it does make it less painful by using the ultrasound because you can avoid bone even on those really tiny joints. In the hip, um, the hip joint and the hip capsule, this is an excellent way of doing it in office. Uh, the iliopsoas and the iliopsoas bursa, we've had a number, say post total joint and getting into those soft tissues. Uh, which you wouldn't dare do without ultrasound guidance. The greater choke bursa, the gluteal tendons, the piriformis, the ischial tuberosity with the hamstring and the bursa. And then in the foot and ankle, the plantar fascia, Achilles with, um, with PRP or regenerative products, medial and lateral ankle tendons, the sinus tarsi, Morton's neuroma, the ankle joints and the toe joints. And I will put a little 
mention in here, if any of you have ever had a plantar fascia injection, uh, it's a whole new level of pain. I have seen people just lay there and I'm not sure how. I had it done twice and nearly needed an epidural for it. There are two methods for performing ultrasound guided injections. One is in plane. Now, a couple of things you're gonna remember is the beam of the ultrasound is only the size of a credit card through here. This makes it tough because you're trying to get your needle directly in that plane of the beam. Out of plane is coming from the side. Beam comes here, you're going here. Now, the trick to this is that the beam comes straight down. If you're exactly parallel, you probably won't see the tip of the needle. And in the out of plane view, that's all you'll see. It's an angling in. So if you played video games, you're gonna be great at this. If you haven't, like most of us, it takes a little more work. But you're going to try to locate your target and aim your needle toward that target. And you'll see that the tip goes right into it. And this is a visualization. I don't know if you can see my cursor here. But this is in plane, so you'll see the entire needle. This is out of plane, so you'll just see the tip of the needle. So we're going to go to, and a couple more things here. Most transducers, now I'm using that Hilsirian, the Sonon from Hilsirian, which is a great little handheld unit, wireless. There are notches on here. This will help you locate the middle of the transducer in your in-plane view. On here, you have a little notch that corresponds to the middle of the transducer, which correlates with the middle of the screen. So it's important, most ultrasounds have a little center line now or a little notch at the top and that for the small joints, this will help you keep them in there. Key things, you wanna keep your hand anchored because between the gel and everything else going on, this little puppy will slide all over the place. So you wanna make sure that you are anchored down. Um, the other is keep the machine directly in front of you. If it's off to the side um, or you know, other positions, you don't want to be turning your head while you've got a needle hovering around someone's because you've got, especially at the beginning, you've got too many things to think about. So I'm going to go backward here. Okay, one of the things I use, we used to always use in teaching guided injections if, because you don't want to just start on patients many times, you want to give yourself something else to start on. So we used to use chickens, like go to get, or a turkey, a uh, whole fresh turkey or chicken. Well, the problem is when you leave those, say you're done at the end of the day and it's like Arizona and it's hot, if you leave that sitting in a garbage can over the weekend and then open that can, it's a whole new experience you don't want to deal with. So we've come, I've come to use, and I think others have too, tofu. Now, I prefer the extra firm. Don't get soft and don't get the cubed. We tried that one time and it just was a disaster. So extra, I've got an extra firm tofu right here. And I'm going to in, put in here a couple of little objects. Now, I like to use Altoids. You can use nuts. We've had trail mix in there before. The Altoids break up eventually. And I'm just going to poke those in there. And I've got mini Altoids. I've got regular Altoids but by sticking those in there and then they'll break up so then it looks like little calcifications. So I'll put one more in here. All right. And if you don't have a needle, guess what? Paper clips work great. So we are so high tech at, at Sound Sports Imaging. I'm gonna glob some gel on the transducer. And now I'm gonna share the ultrasound screen with you. There we go. So we'll go to a full screen. One thing I'm gonna do first is just see how this looks. I'm gonna, you may need to, if you're doing this, increase the gain through there because this is kind of uh, firm. At the bottom of the screen, this line that you see is the bottom of the tofu and this is the plate that this is sitting on. So I'll just decrease the depth a little. 
There we go. So to begin with, and I'm going to hold this with my, I'm going to hold this with my right hand and come in. I'm going to come in from the left of the screen. So the needle or paper clip will show up coming in from the left of the screen. That's why you need to know what direction. If I had the notch facing the other way, then the needle would come in from the right side of the screen. Okay, so I'm injecting, bingo. Now, how stinking cool is this? And mind you, I'm not an injector. There we go. So you can see exactly, whoop, sorry. There you go. Now, key to this too is to locate where you want to be and anchor yourself there. Then bring your needle in under the beam. What you don't want to do is find your, have your transducer, you've got your needle here and then moving your transducer around. That won't do you any good. You need to locate what you're looking for and then come in with your needle and have the needle go to where the ultrasound is. So I'm going to go over, more gel. Okay, there is a big old calcification right there. I'm going to come in from the left of the screen. And, there we go. There we are. So at this point, I am superficial to my structure. So I'm going to back up a little. And this is a nice thing. You don't need to take your needle out. I'm going to angle down or inferior a little, redirect. And now I am right into this. And I can break up the Altoid. There you go. This is just way fun. Okay, for an out of plane view, I'm gonna hold the transfer this way. I have the notch toward me, so the left hand side of the screen will be uh, toward me. Okay, I'm gonna go in right where this notch is, and on this machine, there is a center line. So I'll use that as my guide. And as I come in, there, I obviously did not play, but there's the tip. So now it's a little bit off of that center. So I can, knowing that the left is toward me, I can move the needle my direction. And I've now gotten down to where I need to be. Okay, so let's go over an, another Altoid. Okay, great calcification at the bottom of the screen there. So I will center that off. I'm slowly taking my needle in. And to, so I see the tip. Let's find the other Altoid here. There we go. Sorry, I think it had been too, or too much on that. Tip of the needle directly into the Altoid. And I can tap, tap, tap away at that to break it up or inject it with fluid. And once you inject, you'll see a little flush of fluid as it goes through. So in plane, you will see the whole needle out of plane, you will see the tip of the needle. And it's all about control on the ultrasound. I hope you enjoyed this. This is just so much fun. I'd suggest getting a paper clip and a tofu if you do injections or if you do dry needling. And just practice this because it can enhance your, your needle, your eye, your visualization skills, and your control, your eye-hand control with what you're doing there. 
So thank you for joining today. We look forward to seeing you next week. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at info at soundsportsimaging.com or to go to our website at www.soundsportsimaging.com. Thank you very much.